Welcome to another programming challenge. In this challenge, we want to write a function that will take an array of any size as an argument and then basically reverse the elements in that array. And we want to be able to do this without creating a new array anywhere in our function. So we just want to modify the original array that is being passed into this function that we write. And here I've declared some test arrays, ARR1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and we'll be using these test arrays to test our function and make sure it works. So for an example, if we had some kind of an array of any number of elements, we want to be able to pass this into a function that we write, and that function will return the same array with the same number of elements, but now these elements will be in reverse. So this element in the original array will be in this location of the new array, and this element will be in the first element of this new array. And this second element here will be in the second to last element of this array, and so on and so forth. So as a very quick example, if we had an array that had three elements and it was a b and c and we pass this into our function then that function should return the same array with three elements but now the elements are c b and a so go ahead and give this a try as always i encourage you to try these challenges out for yourself and once you've figured it out and have a solution or are really stuck you can then continue watching the rest of this video so the very first thing we want to do is we want to create our function and I'm going to call it reverse and you can go ahead and name it whatever you would like. And this function is going to take an array as an argument. So it's parameter I'll just call ARR. And we know that at the very end of this function, we want to be able to return that array. But now that array has been flipped or reversed. The next thing we want to do is we want to loop through this array that we pass into this function and start switching the elements. So let's say we had this array and it had five different elements, one, two, three, four, and five. The first thing I want this function to do is to be able to take this first element and switch it with the element at the very end of that array. And then I want to move on to the second element and I want to be able to switch that with this element. And then finally, the third element will just be switched by itself. And I want this function to keep doing this until every element of the array has been switched. And this should work for an array of any size, whether the length is even or odd. In order to be able to switch elements like this, we need to keep track of the first element and the last element. We want to switch these two elements and then move on to the next inner two elements. And we want to keep repeating this until all the elements have been switched. So I'm going to use a counter variable i to basically refer to the very first index of this array. And I want to create a counter variable j to refer to the very last element or last index of this array. And we want to be able to take the elements stored at these two locations, switch them, and then have i refer to the second element and j refer to the second to last element and so on and so forth. So I want i to refer to index zero or the element at index zero, and I want j to refer to the very last element of this array. In this case, the length of this array is five, and the index for the very last element would be four. So the indices of this array is zero, one, two, and three. Once we've switched the elements where the indices i and j are referring to, we want i to be incremented by 1, and we want j to be decremented by 1. So now in the next loop, i is going to refer to the element in this array at the index 1, and now we want j to refer to the element at index 3. And once those two elements have been switched, I want i to be incremented by 1 again, and I want j to be decremented again by 1. Now I'm going to use a for loop to iterate through the array until all these elements have been switched. So I'll just go ahead and create a skeleton of this for loop. And I'm also gonna create two variables called start and end. And these will temporarily hold the elements that the i and j variables are currently referring to. 
So these two variables, start and end, will be used to switch the two elements. And then i will need to be incremented by 1, and j will need to be decremented by 1. So inside this for loop, we know that the variable start will refer to the very first element of this array, arri. We know we're going to start i at 0, so that means start is going to refer to the element stored at index 0 of this array, the very first element. j, however, will need to take on the very last element. So we can create a variable j, and we're going to set this equal to the length of the array minus 1. Remember, array indices start at 0, so in order to refer to the very last element of an array, we need to take the length and subtract 1 from it. So now, if we go back to our for loop, we can set end equal to ARRJ. And now this is referring to the very last element of this array. So after start and end have been assigned the elements where i and j are referring to, we want to take the very first element of the array and assign it end. So what this is doing is it's taking the very last element of an array and it's putting it in the very first location of that array. And similarly, we can take ARRJ and set it equal to start. So whatever value that was originally in the first location of this array now is being placed at the very end of that array. So finally, we want J now to be decremented by 1. So I'm just going to say J is equal to J minus 1. And now in the next iteration of this for loop, J is going to refer to the second to the last element of this array. And we also want i to be incremented by 1, so it refers to the second element of the array. And we're going to do the same thing in the for loop. We're going to take that element and this element and then switch them, just like we did in the very first iteration of this for loop. So in this for loop, we're going to go ahead and create our variable i, set it equal to 0. And then I'm going to type in i is less than j. So I want this for loop to continue doing whatever it's doing so long as the index i is less than j. And I want i to be incremented by 1. So what's so interesting about this conditional i is less than j? Well, we're telling the program to continue this loop as long as i is less than j. So in order to understand this, I'm going to scroll down here. And let's take a look at an even number array. So, so here we go. We have an even number array. The length of this array is 8. And these are just some random integers that I use to populate this array. So in the very first iteration of our loop, i is going to take on the value 0. And that means the variable start, which is referring to arri or arr0, it's going to refer to this very first element, which is 3. And j is going to refer to the very last element. So it's going to take on the index 7. And remember, the index of the very last element of this array is the length of the array, which is 8 minus 1, which is 7. And so end is going to take on the value stored at the very last element of this array, or very last index of this array, and that's 9. So on the very first iteration of this loop, on lines 19 and 20, the value 3 and 9 will be swapped, and i will be incremented by 1. So i is now 1, and j is going to be decremented by 1. So j is now 6. So when i is equal to 1, start is going to refer to the number 4, which is at the second element, or the second index of this array. And end will refer to 1, which is the second to last element, or index of this array. Well, if we kept going through this loop, i would then be equal to 2, j would then be equal to 5, and then again, i will be equal to 3, j will be equal to 4. So now at index 3 and 4, we're going to be referring to 6 and 8, respectively. So what if we went one more? So right now, i is still less than j. On the next iteration of this loop, i would have been equal to 4, and j would have been equal to 3. And at this point, the last two elements in this array have already been swapped. So if we ran the loop again with i is equal to 4 and j is equal to 3, then these two elements would be swapped again, meaning 6 and 8 would be back in their original positions, and we don't want that. So we want to stop this loop when i 
becomes greater than or equal to j, or in our case, i is less than j. We want to keep running the loop so long as i is less than j. So let's actually go ahead and try testing our very first array, which is arr1. So I'm going to console log a call to the function reverse with the argument arr1. And if we wrote this function correctly, then this array 1, 4, 2, 6, 8, 3, 4, 9, 5, 3 would be reversed. So we would be seeing the same array, but this time it would be 3, 5, 9, 4, 3, etc. So let's go ahead and run this. And there you go. It looked like it worked. How about the next one? So console.log reverse arr2. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And we have simmy. And up here, arr2 was ymmis. So that worked. So I'm going to go ahead and just type out the last three so you guys can check your work or check your answers. So I went and typed out the rest of the test arrays, AR1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and here are the results. And these arrays should be switched when compared to these five test arrays.